I can have your attention, please. I'd like to call the Friday, November 9th uh, meeting to order. Uh, the press has been notified. Uh, Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Mr. Bowles? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Coleman? Here. Dr. Dozier? Here. Mr. Elmore? Ms. Emery? Here. Mr. Urban? Mr. Freeman? Here. Mr. Gunn? Here. Mrs. Hartung? Mr. Jackson? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Senator Leatherman? Mr. Lee? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Norwood? Here. Dr. A. Kelly? Here. Mrs. Richardson? Mr. Sam? Here. Thank you. Uh, for the record, I'd like to note that Mr. Elmore, Ms. Richardson, and Ms. Hartung have excused absences and called uh, beforehand. Um, item two, approval of the minutes. Everybody's had an opportunity to review the minutes. Um, any changes or any uh, additions that you looked at? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, First Committee Executive Affairs. We met this morning. Um, I would say that we did go into executive session to hear uh, some issues related to a contractual matter and a legal matter, but no action was required or taken. And that's the only thing I have for uh, executive affairs. Um, academic affairs and accreditation, uh, <clears throat> Mr. W. Coleman chaired for Ms. Hartung, Mr. Coleman. Thank you. We had a, a very good, very good, and you can hear some of it in a few minutes of our meeting. Um, we first was the provost for academic affairs, Dr. King, gave his report and the, the highlights of it is the increase that we have. Find all my notes. Um, in student enrollment, we now had our freshman. Peter can't put my hands on. It is. I got it. the entering class of freshmen this year was 814, and that's a good increase from last year. And the total enrollment for the fall was 4,093 students. Um, it, it, this unbelievable. Um, they, they've added um, Greenville to the Guidance Council breakfasts that are now held in Columbia, Charleston, and Florence in October. Um, the McNair Scholarship Competition is well underway, and, and they're expecting about 150 <coughs> applicants. And these are people that know what the criteria are. And, and they're very well documented as far as their academic achievements and what they're going to take 14 <coughs> students out of that 150 and they'll interview them on January the 4th. Um, we had a successful open house in October with 109 students plus parents and I think our next event is tomorrow and they're expecting 179 students to signed up to attend. That's fantastic. Uh, other events that involve high school students with PD College Fair, and there were up to 2,000 high school students visited our campus to pick up applications and information. And we've had some, some uh, financial assistance officer processing applications already for spring of 2013. Tiffany Wilson, a former financial assistant counselor and an FMU alumni recently left to join another school and Ashley Owens joined the staff to replace her on November 1st. Um, other things we have, we've got a resolution that is in your packet that was mailed to you on the uh, strategic plan. If the committee met, discussed, and all this was assisted by trustees at the last meeting, um, faculty staff and and even some business people in the community and and you all mailed it in advance if there's no questions 
we would like to make a motion to committee that we approve uh, resolution 0612 approving a revised strategic plan for Francis Man University. Um, Mr. Coleman has made the motion for the revised strategic plan for Francis Marion University to have a second. Second. Just to repeat um, what you're voting on, discussing um, the Faculty Senate, the President's Strategic Planning Committee, the Faculty Administration have worked very long and hard to revise the strategic plan for the university uh, as required by the Association of Colleges and Schools. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, yes. may, I, may I speak to this? Briefly? Absolutely. The only variation in this plan from what you looked at during the summer retreat are two items. One item that came from the board was further emphasize the relationship to businesses in the community. That's addressed in this plan. The second part of that is something that uh, the faculty leadership and, and the provost and I worked on together. We wanted to strengthen the commitment of the university to continue to work on compensation and benefits for faculty and staff at this university. I'll pause there just for a second, Mr. Chairman. As, as everybody in this board knows, largely because the board has taken the lead on this every single year, we worked very, very uh, diligently to increase compensation for our faculty over the last decade. And we've been very, very successful in that area. But, but as we frequently say, that's one area where if you let it go a year or two without being diligent about continuing it, you essentially fall back to where you were before. We wanted to make sure that, that the compensation for this faculty and staff and their fringe benefits was a very, very strong uh, objective that was contained in that university strategic plan. So those are the two changes from what you saw this summer. Any uh, other questions or discussion about that? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cole. And we also um, had some information given to us on the liberal arts department and uh, everything positive. The nursing update got um, Eight students admitted to the nurse educator track and 32 students admitted to the family nurse practitioner track. 31 full-time and one part-time, which is, is very good. And on the School of Education report, I, I asked permission of the committee to get Dr. Falkenberry to give that because it is an unbelievable report. And if he would, Dr. Falkenberry, would you please? Yes, it is a pleasure to give uh, a quick summary of this report, and, and part of the joy comes from uh, the fact that this was an outstanding review. And uh, uh, I think I can summarize it by saying this is what was in the report. All standards were met at both the initial and graduate level, and no weaknesses were found, and no areas for improvement were recommended. Now, but I want you to know this is this is pretty much an unprecedented review. I'll, I'll quote from the from the chair of the committee, Dr. Martha Ross, who was from James Madison University. She was a veteran of over 50 visits, and she said to her knowledge, it was unprecedented to receive a review with no weaknesses and no errors for improvement. So we're extremely proud, and, and the credit goes to a lot of people. It starts with the School of Education faculty, who did an outstanding job. With Dr. Wayne Pruitt, who was the coordinator, we had tremendous administrative support from the president, the provost, and all the administrative offices. And the, and the chair of this committee made it a point to mention that she was delighted with the collaboration that occurred between education and the arts and sciences and business. And so uh, this was an outstanding report, but it was an outstanding effort from the entire university that made it happen. I don't know about all of you in your businesses, but I, I'm an ex-banker and have had a lot of uh, investigation, not a lot of, <laughs> 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 a lot of but, but to get any kind of a 
accreditation that with no recommendations and no weaknesses is, is totally unheard of in whatever field or venture you're in. And that's kudos to the Department of Education. Um, that pretty much finishes my report. Dr. Carter, don't be laughing. No, sir, I was just wondering, Mr. Chairman, should we do a background check? <laughs> <laughs> no I'll, investigation. I don't know about that, uh, President Carter, but I would remind the board that uh, this is being filmed and it's live on TV, and uh, maybe we could edit that part out. <laughs> please, please do. Uh, maybe the best part of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, excellent report, and congratulations for that review. Um, Moving right along, Development and Alumni Affairs with Tracy Freeman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, we met this morning at 1030. Uh, gave our overview for Mr. J. Dowd, uh, First Education Foundation. Uh, had a meeting on October 24th and just did a normal uh, business matters and operations. Uh, the scholarship reception was held on October 25th. It was very well attended. Uh, Friday, March 4th, uh, excuse me, March the 8th, 2013, will be the FMU Foundation Golf Tournament, which will be held at the Country Club of South Carolina. So please uh, put that on your calendars. Um, he also gave an overview of the Rural Leadership uh, Institute. Uh, they are doing uh, wonderful things throughout the uh, surrounding communities at this time. On the alumni report that came from Mr. Julian Young, alumni director, uh, we have had uh, they have been very, very busy in the past two months. Uh, the Darlington Hartsville alumni reception was held on September 6th. It was sponsored by our very own uh, trustee Stephen Jones and President of the Alumni Association, Mr. James Harrell, very well attended. I also had an after hours reception on September the 13th at the uh, uh, Southern Hops Brewing Company. That was um, very well attended and had a good time, I understand. Uh, Psychology of the Alumni uh, reception was October the 2nd, um, again very well attended. Uh, baseball Alumni Weekend was October the 6th and the 7th. Uh, I understand that the, the alumni had a game at the Athletics Complex and they really, really did enjoy uh, playing in a new athletic uh, complex over there. Bodger Department had a uh, alumni reception October the 9th which uh, gave out some awards, uh, one of the recipients being Dr. John McKee of uh, Classes 1977. Um, and then a couple of events that are, will be coming up that we definitely like for you all to put on your calendar. You should be receiving as a trustee a, a little um, flyer that's coming out. It's gonna be on November the 29th at 6 p.m. at the um, Performing Arts Center. Um, we even have a music all the way back from the 80s, so anyone can leave the music from that time frame. Um, it's a very, very uh, attractive price, uh, but just only $10, and it's going out virtually mainly to the local um, persons, and then also to you all as trustees here in the, in the room here. Um, also put on your calendars, February 28, 2013, will be our uh, annual alumni alum, uh, membership dinner, and that was will be at the Performing Arts Center again. It was very, very well attended last year. And then on um, February the 11th through the 16th will be the homecoming uh, events this year with the 16th, of course, being homecoming. And then on February the 15th, we're starting something new this year, which would be that Friday night before, we're gonna have a concert uh, there at the Performing Arts Center, uh, which will be featuring the, the Blue Dogs um, in concert. So we're, trying to, uh, again, um, publicize and promote the Performing Arts Center to uh, not only fellow alumni, but to also to the entire community. And that commits, uh, commits my report, sir. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Freeman? Moving right along, financial affairs and facilities, Mr. George McIntyre. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we met uh, and reviewed at the committee uh, the budget summary for this quarter. If you'll find it under tab three in your books, uh, we have completed the first quarter of the fiscal year, and that's reflected in this budget summary. Uh, we have received approximately 62% of our funds for the year at this point in time, and we have expended about 24% of our of our monies at this point in time. So we're on target uh, both income and expenditure wise. So everything looks good at this first quarter juncture of the uh, fiscal year. 
Uh, next, the head count is up slightly, which reflects some of the uh, increased instructional areas we have here at Francis Marion, things like the Performing Arts Center coming online, and um, that's generally uh, a result with uh, increase a little bit in faculty and staff positions as a result of these new programs that we're offering at Francis Marion. Uh, next is the financial, uh, financial assistance programs offered. I'll just note for the record that that has increased to approximately 87% of our students receiving some form of financial assistance, and um, that's a good thing. Uh, that's up 2% from last year, and it's up 5% from 2008-2009. So we're making all the efforts we possibly can to, to find financial resources for our, for our students. Uh, any questions about the budget summary? Next, Mr. Chairman, we reviewed the year-end audit that uh, the university had that was uh, for last fiscal year that ended June 30th. Um, the audit is a clean audit. It's uh, what we call an unqualified opinion was issued by the auditor, which means they had no reservations concerning the financial statements of Francis Marion and has issued a clean opinion. Uh, there were no findings of any material inaccuracies uh, and the audit firm proposes no adjustments be made. There were no instances of non-compliance with appraisal, excuse me, accounting standards. Um, very good audit and it's due in no small measure to a lot of people. Uh, this uh, of course falls under the purview of Vice President uh, for business, Kispert. Also, I'd like to just recognize uh, Associate VP for Accounting, Gus McDill, who has direct uh, supervision of this audit. Uh, but there are quite a few other people that play a role in, in this, which is, again, no small task. Um, I'd like to recognize at this time in the accounting office, Kathy Swartz, Director of Accounting Services, Crystal Bazin, Director of Financial Services and Student Accounts, and Quentin Williams, a senior account cash man manager. In the financial aid office, I'd like to recognize Kim, Kim Ellisor, the director of financial assistance and her staff for all the fine work that they do and in, in, um, in receiving these funds. And there are a lot of federal funds, state funds that flow through that office and it's quite a task trying to, to keep those in order. In the facilities management area, Ralph Davis, director of facilities management and his staff deserve a special note of, of uh, thanks because of the large projects that they oversaw this year, uh, including the Performing Arts Center and, the, of course, the Athletics Complex. And uh, those were handled in a very timely and professional manner and thus uh, ended up with a very good part of the audit. And also I'd like to mention Eric Garris, who is Director of Purchasing here at Francis Marion, that uh, also played a very vital role in, in the result of a very good audit. Um, I don't know if we ever stop and recognize that there are a lot of federal monies that flow through this this university and uh, they are audited under different rules uh, but there's a large amount of money that flows through here through direct loans and Pell Grants and other programs uh, in fact for the year ending June 30th 2012 there was forty two million one hundred and fifty eight thousand four hundred and forty three dollars that flowed through that office so it's rather amazing in my view, that uh, how well and how professional that is handled and there are just no findings or no problems whatsoever as far as the audit goes. Uh, and I'll just mention also for the record that under Dr. Carter's presidency for 13 years now, there has not been one, one major finding of any sort in the accounting and in the audit that we have received each year as, as uh, at the end of each fiscal year. And this is just a, a great compliment, I think, to the entire financial team that manages our monies, uh, money flow, and all monies that come through here in a very professional way. They're great guardians of the public monies, and I just think we need to thank them and uh, very appreciative of all the work that they do. Any questions about the audit? Um, next and finally on our uh, committee report, Mr. Chairman, we did look at the facilities and uh, we have closed out essentially the Performing Arts uh, Center construction and um, essentially have closed out also the athletic complex construction. A few little minor tweaks are, are occurring over at the athletic complex, but for all uh, essential purposes that, that has been completed and done a very well, very professional, very well done. Uh, the only other project on the board right now is our office services building. 
It's a 3,900 square foot building that will handle our printing needs and the mail room and other needs here at Francis Marion. Uh, the contractor has been selected um, and it's uh, anticipated that that will be completed sometime in June or July of this year. And Mr. Chairman, that pretty much completes our report unless someone has a question. Well, it's an excellent report. I really appreciate you uh, recognizing all the staff that helped, um, how would I say, uh, get through that difficult process of uh, spending those federal dollars and money. And um, thank you. Anything else from Mr. McIntyre? Moving right along, Mr. Eddie Gunn, Student Affairs and Athletics. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Um, the Student Affairs and Athletics Committee met this morning. First of all, we had a presentation by Dean Ramey, who introduced us to the new Director of Career Development, Dr. Ronald Miller. <coughs> Certainly glad to have him on board. Uh, she also reported that we had 57 student organizations and 11 nonprofits who participated in the Student Involvement Fair. She has a new class of 22 very uh, fine individuals involved in leadership FMU. Uh, the Fall Career Fair, and this is, I think, uh, important for us to note here because once you finish college, then the, uh, any college, you have other things to do afterwards, hopefully find a job. So we had uh, a Fall Career Fair with over 45 companies uh, representing there uh, here for our uh, students to talk to about the possibility of aligning with them after graduation. Uh, coming up on the calendar, we have the uh, Multicultural Advisory Board has the Native American Heritage Program coming up on the 13th. The Leadership FMU Recognition Ceremony is going to be right here in the Hendricks Room on the 19th next week. Uh, already have a program scheduled for MLK Junior Day in January in the Chapman Auditorium. And this year we're going to be participating in the Dance Marathon uh, over in the University Center, which benefits the Children's Miracle Network and the McLeod Children's Hospital. Uh, Dean Ramey says this is a 12-hour event. Would you define we? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Carter and Chuck. Uh, yeah, well, maybe the, the, the staff. You know, no trustees are expected to be dancing, except those that have previous experience in uh, dancing in public. I won't make any names. Uh, we were certainly pleased to have a report from Cody Simpson, the SGA president. Uh, Cody gave a, a lengthy report of one of the ac activities that were taking place on the SGA level. Uh, the student college Democrats and college Republicans, along with the FMU chapter of the NAACP, were responsible for producing a, an event on political awareness and uh, how to get people more involved and in, uh, doing voter registration. Uh, there was a fall elections for SGA were held this fall, held in October, five freshman seats and two upperclassmen seats were filled. Voter turnout was much higher than in the past. And let me just say that the one of the most significant things they've done is that, of course, this was their annual trip to Columbia for the student legislature. Uh, of course, Julian Young is the uh, university advisor for this. But a significant achievement was by our university was that uh, Cody was elected governor of the student legislature for next year. And this is the first time an individual from Francis Marion has held this position since 1979. So we're certainly glad to hear that. And congratulations to Cody and all the hard work he's done. Uh, because he really sort of got this back off the ground last year with uh, Dr. Carter and, and Dean Ramey's uh, assistance. Uh, <clears throat> moving on to athletics. Athletic Director Hartford brought us up to date on uh, many of the activities that were taking place in the athletic department. Uh, certainly on the college, uh, I mean the uh, soccer program uh, under new coach uh, Frank Pitt uh, had the best season in five years, uh, seven, nine, and one. Uh, three of those losses were to BCS conference members that went on to the National Division One tournament. A uh, men's soccer team, uh, five, nine, and two. Uh, we were improving from last year and uh, they've got a, a bright outlook for the future. Golf team concluded its fall season with four top 10 finishes and placed, uh, FMU placed the second best tied for fifth in Western Carolina's Hummingbird Intercollegiate uh, Tournament. Basketball starts tonight. 
women's basketball uh, here at uh, FMU starts tonight with the men starting next week. And we've added a new, uh, welcomed a new uh, ed athletic trainer and compliance uh, officer uh, mm -hmm. to replace those, those vacancies. And of course, I think y'all may know that Gary Edwards, our basketball coach, men's basketball coach, has now assumed duties as assistant athletic director and internal oper and for internal operations. And so we're certainly glad to hear that. But uh, the last thing I'll mention is that Murray indicates that the fundraising is going along well. We should be where we were last year or beyond. And anyone who has not uh, already joined the Swamp Folk Club, please do so. Uh, and you know, that again. That is concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Further discussion? For that? Yes, sir. Sir, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Trustee Gunn did a terrific job in terms of talking about Cody's contributions to the student legislature. But I, but I would be remiss if I didn't just add a comment or two to that. You've got to understand, over the last two years, Cody recruited, organized, developed, trained and led these delegations in Columbia student legislature. He did it with an enormous amount of hard work on, on his part. All the students who participated deserve terrific credit, but I want everybody to understand that the driving force behind that was really Cody. It was Co Cody's enthusiasm, and most of all, it was his enormous pride in Francis Marion. I asked Cody this year, I said, why are you hammering away so hard at this? And he said, so that everybody will recognize that we are not only as good as, but better than the other universities in the state. Cody, stand up and let us recognize you, okay? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we're very proud of that young man's leadership. Thank you. And my friend on Facebook, too, he has that. <laughs> <laughs> I always post it. Um, and now, moving along to my favorite part of the board meeting, the president's report, Dr. Fred Carter. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, let me move through this pretty carefully, quickly, if I might, and, and, of course, carefully as well. But uh, 814 students in the freshman class, that's phenomenal. It really is. Economic times that we're currently facing, uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, being able to go out there and bring in 1,814 exceptional students in the freshman class is nothing short of miraculous. And I think everybody in this room knows enormous accolades go to Peter King, go to Perry Wilson, and that wonderful admission staff for the terrific work they do. I would also underscore the fact that the tough thing about admissions is you never bring closure on the process. You have a good year with regard to the opening of classes and 814 freshmen, and then your president turns you and says, well, what, when's the first open house and what are the numbers look like? Yeah. So I'm also pleased to say that the first two open houses have record attendances as well, and I think, again, that underscores the terrific job they're doing, but also how well, uh, how highly this university is thought of now particularly the accomplishments of our faculty and staff. Look, let's be candid with one another. What really draws people to this university is the quality of the academics. And, uh, and that rides on the back of the faculty and staff. But for the purposes of this morning, congratulations, Peter. You're doing a terrific job. Mr. Chairman, next issue. Let, oh, I, I can't let the 87% of, of financial assistance, students with financial assistance, to go by. Yes, that's a terrific figure, uh, uh, Trustee McIntyre. I would remind all the trustees, though, that when you have 80% of your students on financial assistance, that increases the obligation to give and to encourage other people to give. So let's always remember that, that uh, there's no magic wand with regard to funding those kids on financial assistance. There's an obligation on the part of all of us to continue to go out there and, um, and uh, stomp around in the underbush for additional dollars to fund those scholarships. But as we all know, there's no greater gift that a man or woman can give to somebody else than the gift of education. So. Uh, health initiatives. Let me mention that very, very quickly. Um, 
We talked on the, on, uh, um, uh, W talked, uh, Mr. Coleman talked about the nurse practitioner program and, and our enrollment in, in the uh, beginning in January. Truth of the matter is all of our initiatives are moving forward very, very well with, with uh, those health programs. Nurse practitioner program will start in January. Um, we're moving ahead at a, at a pretty good rate in our discussions with the University of South Carolina about our physician assistance program. I know Dr. Kelly's a part of that team working with the faculty on that one. I believe we're beginning to make substantial headway there. Hopefully, we'll have that agreement wrapped up and we'll be able to announce when, uh, when we'll, we'll move forward with that program uh, within the next year. Not that we would move forward with the program within the next year, but that the agreements would be finished within the next year and we would have a starting date for that uh, program. Uh, I will tell you that discussions are moving forward with the third and fourth year medical students that would do their work in, in, uh, in Florence. Of course, we're a part of the consortium with McLeod and with Carolinas and with the University of South Carolina that would host that effort. Um, and our efforts are, are focused on two areas now. The provost has been, our provost has been leading the effort to complete the feasibility study. Uh, we, we anticipate the feasibility study for those third and fourth year medical students will be completed. Dr. Chapman, around the 1st of December. Sir. Yes, sir. Good, good. And then shortly thereafter, we will uh, we'll sit down with our other three partners in that process and develop a, uh, a time frame and a template for, uh, for moving those initiatives forward. On the second side of that, of course, the, the uh, raising the money for our health sciences building downtown, since that involves some discussions with a, um, with a, a number of prospective donors, we'll, uh, we'll be a little more vague about the details with that other than to suggest that those discussions are going very, very well. You all know we, we're talking here about that a $15 million building that we would want to build in downtown of Florence with some place within the vicinity of the Performing Arts Center that would accommodate the nurse practitioner students, physician assistant students, and the third and fourth year medical students from the USC School of Medicine once we're able to develop that process. So I simply leave you with the assurance that both of those processes are proceeding well at this point. Just to note, if I might, on the financial audit, and, and Trustee McIntyre did, as always, a terrific job delivering that report. All the, from Gus to Jay to Eric to Ev Kim, everybody involved in that process works so diligently making sure that the pr everything's done pristinely. But you know, the, the other comments you made, George, about the last 13 years, you, you know, in truth, that goes to the faculty and staff here, that, that in 13 years, we've not had a single financial irregularity at this university on an audit, on a transaction, on a travel voucher. You got to understand when you walk away from this as I do, that those 525 faculty and staff out there are people with some of the highest integrity of anybody I've ever worked with in my life. 13 years without a single incident of anybody having a financial problem at this institution. I'm very, very proud of the, the people here and the integrity that they bring to this process. Thank you for passing, Mr. Chairman, the strategic plan this morning. As you all know, that's a, that's a blueprint for, uh, for guiding the university's actions over the next five to seven years. I think, again, the faculty and staff have put an enormous amount of effort in that, and I think it's a very, very good strategic plan to lead our efforts. If you recall, we considered the master facilities plan during the summer we will bring that back to the board at the March meeting for your review. Now, what we won't, we will not ask you to approve that plan because, in truth, with facilities, we approve project by project rather than the development of a plan overall. But certainly, we want our, the development of those individual projects to follow the guideline laid out by the master plan. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, we'll bring that master plan back to Mr. McIntyre's finance committee at the March meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to do, I'd like this morning to announce the fact that we, we are going to pursue 
uh, something a little different at the university. We're, we're, we're going to create an endowed chair in shared governance at the university. And, and let me explain. All of us know that the most important thing we do is produce quality academic programs here that provide the education that, uh, that is uh, probably as, as a substantial education as anybody could get in the state of South Carolina. Most of us around this table, all of us around this table, most of us in this room respect the fact that the good academics come about largely because of a very, very good shared government system. That the faculty and the trustees have such strong trust in one another and the roles that they fill in the university that there's deference for the expertise that exists in both sides. And, and I got to tell you, nobody in this country gets that better than this faculty and this group of trustees. You guys have, have carried that to the level of almost uh, a pristine exactness. Now, having said that, I think it's appropriate that we memorialize a lot of that by creating an endowed chair in shared governance. Uh, we will begin raising money for the endowment on that chair with the expectation that we would fill that chair beginning the fall of, of 2014. Uh, I would ask the board to consider that that chair once filled would be given, would be filled by the elected chair of the faculty. Uh, appropriate given the fact that it's a shared governance chair. But I would also ask the board to consider that the that chair be named uh, in honor of the one faculty member who I think has fought the most strenuously at this camp on this campus over the past decades uh, for shared governance, that the chair be named for Dr. E. Lorraine de Montbazon. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I would ask uh, the board just to, for a second, I would ask the board to receive the thanks of all of us on the faculty and staff. You know, over the past few years, we've watched the board. We've watched the harmonious interaction that occurs among this board. We've never seen on this board the faculty or staff a single division or split that's required us to sit back and say, where are they going and what are they doing? That's not because you're a monolith. It's because you talk among yourselves, you build consensus, you decide the direction you want to take, and the type of leadership that you give back to us, the administration, the faculty and staff, is clear, decisive, and resolute. I'll be careful about the way I say this, but I look in the paper at many of the boards of trustees of sister institutions around the state, and that at least gives me reason every morning to get down on my knees and thank God for the leadership I have on this board of trustees. So I'd like to end by doing something that you frequently do back towards us, thanking you guys for everything you do and the leadership that you provide for this university. We're very proud of the 17 men and women that comprise this board. Thank you very much. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, anybody want to comment on that? Uh, I didn't know we moved you closer to God, but we thank you for uh, all you do, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> moving right along, uh, unfinished business, any unfinished business? new business in light of that uh, I do have a special announcement today um, talking about the future which will be uh, a challenge and a task uh, going to announce the uh, nominating committee and with uh, not a lot of pressure Mr. Ken Jackson has agreed to chair that committee along with Mr. George McIntyre and Ms. Lisa Emery and their task will be to uh, develop a slate of officers and recommendations for the March meeting, which they put forward to the board for a vote in the June meeting. So with that being said, I would mention to the group, um, if you're interested in serving in one of those capacities as chairman, vice chairman, secretary, uh, certainly you can mention that 
to one of the committee members. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion, a lot of information, and um, <clears throat> I will tell you that it, it does come with an expectation and responsibility, and it, it does take a little time and effort and work. And but if you're interested, uh, we start with Mr. Jackson. I thank them very much for their willingness to serve and take on such a, an important task for the future of the university. Any other new business we need to mention? Hearing none, uh, no executive session needed. With that being said, with no further business, I move that this meeting be adjourned. Do I have a second? Second. second. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming today.